Welcome to the GP Llama YouTube channel and do a head-to-head -head comparison of two very similar power meters, those being the Asioma Pro MX and the Garmin Rally XCs. Now I do have the conversion kit here because I converted the RS200s over to the XCs for my testing. Now I say very similar because at a high level, these two are kind of difficult to differentiate. They're both dual-sided SPD pedal bodies. They're designed for cross-country, gravel, cyclocross, and maybe road if SPD is your preferred pedal of choice for that discipline. There's options of single-sided or dual-sided measurement. They both have plus or minus 1% power accuracy or margin of error. Installation of both of these is very simple. You just need a 15 mil open-ended wrench. And both of these have status LEDs on the inside. Now I haven't included the SRM X Power SPD pedals in this comparison. And although they are similar to these offerings, they're not quite at the same level. And that's in regards to the power accuracy. They're plus or minus 2%. Battery life, they're down to 30 hours plus battery drain when not in use. And the price far exceeds uh, both of these options. So not really a fair fight to include the SRM X Power SPDs. Maybe a video for another day. So to pick between these two offerings, you'll need to do some homework, and hopefully watching this video is part of that homework. So coming up in this video, a rundown and comparison of the technical specifications of these two products. I'll cover additional or unique features on both of these power meter pedals. We'll look at the pricing of the pedals and the replacement pedal bodies, and then I'll get into my experience of both of these products from my long-term use. And yes, I have had the Pro MX for quite some time now. Okay, let's get stuck into the details with the technical specifications here. And there's quite a bit to get through, so let's kick it off nice and fast. Both of these offerings have three options on the market. So there's a dual-sided, a single-sided, and an upgrade kit from both Favero and Garmin. The pedal is an SPD, as mentioned in the intro there. Cross-country, gravel, cyclocross, and road, if that's your thing with these pedals. The pedal body type, here's where they start to differ. The Pro MX is an alloy pedal body, and the Garmin Rallies are a plastic composite. Bearings, again, here's where they differ. The bearings on the Pro MX, two roller bearings. And on the Rally XC, there is one needle roller bearing and one deep groove ball bearing. Stack height, again, here's where things start to separate. 11.2 millimeters on the Pro MX for Vero, 13.5 on the Rally XCs. When it comes to the Q factor, there's not much difference there at all. The Fivero is not having an official spec. That's my measurement there with the asterisk. And it's good to see them being a standard Q factor as well. Given these pedals are likely to be on a bike with a wider stance anyway. Mountain bike, maybe a gravel bike with wider crank sets. The last thing we want to do is push those out even further just because of the pedals. Weight wise, 191.4 grams claimed from the Pro MX side of things and on the Rally XC's 222. Although they did come in a little lighter than that on my scales. Now, which one's better when it comes to weight? Well, rotational mass. You want less of that on your bike. So points go to the Pro MX. Onto the battery type, and the Pro MX has a fully internal rechargeable battery protected from the elements. And over on the rally side of things, well, this is the whole video in itself. What batteries they use or did use and the battery door generations. So I think they're onto generation three of the battery doors and generation two or type two of the batteries they're using. Now shipping with two CR1 slash 3N, so one each side, as opposed to four LR44s. The battery life specification is quite interesting with both companies coming at their specs from different angles. Favero saying at least 60 hours and Garmin saying up to 120 hours. So they're coming at different angles there. 120 hours, twice that of the Pro MX, quite impressive, but that will depend on the freshness of that battery that you are installing. Something I can never guarantee. I've got to order those batteries online. There's not something that I can buy down in the street here in a town of 120,000 people. They're just not that popular. So I'm ordering off eBay. They come in a little dodgy packet. And to be honest, I haven't been tracking hours or usage of them. So I'm not quite sure I'm getting 120 hours on those. Anyhow, it's a whole other video in itself, the batteries that the rallies use. Okay, that's the physical side of things covered off with both of these options. Onto the more technical side, and I did have trouble getting some specs from Garmin on the Rally XCs or Rally RSs or RKs or Vector 3s. They don't list the power range the pedal will measure in, power accuracy plus or minus 1%, cadence range not listed from Garmin, protocols, uh, both of these pedals support AMP Plus and Bluetooth. Favero listing Bluetooth times three, Garmin just listing Bluetooth, I believe it's dual. I'm not quite sure they don't list that in the technical specifications. Onto the data that you get from these pedals, and it's pretty much one for one on this. So you get power, cadence, and left-right balance on the dual-sided version. In addition to power, cadence, and left-right balance, I do need to add torque effectiveness and pedal smoothness as data that's reported from both of these systems. 
and you'll get the full suite of cycling dynamics too, with the Asioma Pro MXs now introducing PCO, the platform centre offset measurement, to see how balanced you are on the pedals. Both pedals have active temperature compensation, calibration is automatic, and exactly when that zero offset takes place automatically does differ between these two offerings. But both pedals do require you to do a manual zero offset when first installing or swapping the pedals between bikes. Jumping down to the next one, oval or Q-ring support or non-round ring support, I guess you would call it. Uh, the Pro MX do support that with their IAV, Garmin do not. The Garmin support site does have an article on using oval chain rings with their power meter pedals, and it gives a little insight into how the pedal works underneath. They state here that the rally and vector power meter pedals assume a constant angular velocity within a single crank revolution. Now with oval and Q-rings not having a constant angular velocity, it throws things out. Never mind that, Garmin do state though that for most riding conditions and bike setups, this assumption allows the pedals to report power within its stated accuracy. They go on to say Garmin has not determined the variance in angular velocity when using oval chain rings in real riding conditions. All of this can be summarised though with their recommendation there in the last sentence saying that for best accuracy they recommend using a circular ring set on your bike. The Ingress Protection Rating was another rabbit hole that I went down with these specifications as I was doing my research. Asioma list the Pro MX having IP67, those two numbers standing for solids and liquid rating, 6 being dust proof, 7 being waterproof for up to 30 minutes in 1 metre of water. On the Garmin side of things, they only list the liquid rating, not the solid rating, so it's IP7. Maybe an oversight on the Garmin side of things, but I can't understand why they don't list IP67 or something, very strange. On the management side of things, and again, another rabbit hole to go down with this. The Favero app is a dedicated app just for managing their power meters. As such, it's quite a powerful little tool, having some remote diagnostic functionality built in. So if you ever have a problem with your Favero power meter, you can connect the app to your meter. It will pull down some diagnostics. It will send it back to Favero HQ. They can analyze what's going on and provide you support straight away. On the Garmin side of things, it's the Garmin Connect app. The Swiss army knife of apps that does a lot of different things. Seems to work okay, but you do have to drill down a few menus to get what you're after for the pedal configuration and any updates. Onto the max user weight, 120 kilos on the Favero's, 105 on the Rallies, and the warranty, same, same, two years for both. Now onto another differentiator between these two pedals, and that's on the Garmin side of things. The spindles for both the Rallies and the Vector 3s are compatible with multiple types of pedal bodies. So as I've done, I had the RS200s, the Shimano compatible pedal bodies, and swapped those out to the XC SPD pedal bodies using the same spindles. If I wanted, I could go the LKs, so the look pedal bodies as well. Now I'm not sure if anybody actually takes advantage of that and changes pedal bodies between bikes. It is a bit of a time consuming process to do and you do have to be very careful with the right tools, but that is something unique on that power meter offering from Garmin. And finally, onto the pricing of the three options here, the Pro MX dual-sided, 750 euros. Now that's including the average VAT. I'm trying to even things up a little bit here. In US dollars, 759. On the rally side of things, 1100 euro and 1200 USD. So Garmin definitely sitting at that premium price tag for their power meter pedals. On the single-sided, 450. Again, that's factoring average VAT over there in Europe. 499 US versus 650 for the single-sided RC 100s and 700 US dollars for the XC 100s. The pedal bodies are at very different prices and for a very good reason. There's no electronics in the Favero pedal body. It's just a pedal body and bearings. The rallies, on the other hand, are a bit of a composite when it comes to technology. The gauges and the electronics are in the spindle, but the battery is still in the pedal body, making replacements for those a lot more expensive. Okay, with less than 10 minutes on the clock so far into this video, hopefully that's answered a lot of the questions that you've had if you're looking at both of these pedal systems and you are unsure which one to go with. Is there a clear winner? Yeah, there is, but it's entirely up to you what to go with. Is this an unfair comparison? Maybe. My bias is always towards something that works and works very well for the riding that I do and the testing that I do up against other power meters. There's also another factor we have to take into account when it comes to the rallies. Now the rallies are based on the Vector 3 spindle. According to the FCC, I believe they're identical. And the Vector 3s were launched back in 2017. Favero have launched the Pro MX in 2024. They've had a number of years to refine their pedal, to make it lighter, cheaper, and broadcast all the data that we get from the rallies as well. 
So not really an apples to apples comparison when it comes to technology and timing. However, they are still on the market as the latest products in the SPD power meter category for both of these companies. So I do think it's fair to put them head to head. Now changing gears a little bit and onto my experience with both of these pedal systems as a cyclist. Putting all the technical specifications and what they do behind us, what were they like to ride? Were they squeaky, did they break? What was the actual foot on pedal experience with both? And starting off with the easy one, the Pro MX. I've been using those for over 12 months now. And to be honest, there's really not much to report. They work well as pedals, there was no squeaking, the bearings are still spinning just fine in those. And I'll put links in the video description below to my full review of those published just last week. When it comes to the rallies and vectors and the SPD conversion of that, overall the experience has been okay. And by okay I mean it's now story time with Llama. As a pedal, these have been fine. No unclipping when I didn't need to during sprints, no squeaking, I attribute that to the shoes that I wear, the bearings in these, just fine. And with a third generation battery door, no dropouts or data drops from any issues caused by the battery moving around. However, looping back to my original review of these, when they had the, I'm looking around for it now, they're somewhere else, the SPD SL pedal body on these, I had a few smaller issues with sprinting and cadence data when out of the saddle, giving it the full beans. The problem being is that jag right there, that jag through the floor is going to be a problem with accurate power. If you don't have accurate cadence, you're not going to get accurate power from one of these power meters. And that's what's happening right there. Dropping down and then picking back up and being okay. But that is what's going on right there. Hmm. Not the first time I've seen this happen and it's a lot better with this newer firmware, but the sprints are a little bit out through my testing. Now, to be honest, I'd forgotten about that until I was looping back today because I'd gone even deeper down into that rabbit hole with a few other issues. I'll also lightly touch on the fact that after really hard sprints with both the vectors and the rallies, I was seeing an offset on these pedals, which did require a manual zero to then line up with other meters. That aside, it's these sprint dropouts that I've been really digging into over the last 12 months, three months, and over the last week that I do need to discuss as it's something that is occurring with these pedals that I've been trying really, really hard to get a resolution to because I knew this video was coming. So pulling up my favorite website, the DCR Analyzer tool, things aren't looking too good here. Now the name of these pedals, they're Vector 3s. I use the name interchangeably because the spindles on here are Vector 3s or, uh, or the rallies and the results I'm getting from them are also one of the same, but things aren't looking very good there at all for these sprints. This was on the Stages R8100 Joule, the Shimano power meter with the clamping gauges that does work on the right hand side. The Vector 3s were dropping out in very, very hard sprints. Now I'm not just talking wind it up and put power down. I'm talking all out teeth gritting. Think of a gorilla on a bike looking very ugly. I had to make sure the road was empty for cars. I wasn't looking up ahead. These are full on sprints, getting out as much power as possible. And I am talking uh, 1276, 1280 watts there, but according to the vectors, no watts at all. So riding along, riding along, with the anger that I had with that reading next to nothing for the sprint, I did another sprint. Same thing again, out of the saddle, full side to side bike throw with some nice stiff Shimano cranks. Nothing reported from the Vector 3s during the sprints. That was a concern. So what's going on there? We're dropping down to the cadence I think this is what's going on there. We're seeing here in the sprints, the stages there is ramping up and settling into over 120 RPM. That's good sprint cadence. The Vector 3s dropping out, not recording any cadence at all. No cadence means no power. And that's exactly what we're seeing both in that sprint there and that sprint there. So not very happy days there from sprinting with that data set. I've got another seven data sets showing that I can replicate this error with both the Vector 3s and the rally spindles. I won't take you through all seven, but I'll show you a couple of others. Here's another one here with the cadence dropping out. This with the rally RSs, these ones right here. Uh, I call them RS, but again, that'd be the XCs or the LKs, whatever pedal body I had. Cadence dropping down in the sprints there, up against the stages. Another data set here, a sprint. So things are fine, just riding along, riding along, riding along. This is on the mountain bike um, with the Vector 3 SPDs or the rallies SPDs. Again, out of the saddle on the mountain bike, 1157. 11.77 and the Vector 3s dropping to nothing. So road bike, mountain bike, vectors, rallies, 
able to reproduce. I'm out of fingers, but cadence, as you can see over my shoulder there, something was definitely up. So I bundled up all these seven data sets. Oh, by the way, there's another one here. Let's have a look at these two sprints. Ah, oh, look, they're horrible. Same deal. Rally RS stages out in the road bike again, sprints dropping out and sprints dropping out. You get the picture. I won't dive too much more into that, but it's pretty ugly. All these data sets were sent over to Garmin mid last year prior to Eurobike. I was concerned with what I was seeing, given I could replicate these across two of their products, the rallies and the vectors, and two of my bikes, the road bike and the mountain bike. The data was looked into, but I didn't get a reply. So in January this year, when I was raising a support ticket every day of the month to Garmin, this was one of the topics that I did raise. That ticket remained unanswered. I reached out to Garmin directly on this one. I don't want to be too much of a prick, but as I said, I knew this video was coming. I knew there were going to be head-to-head -head comparisons. I wanted to give Garmin every chance to resolve this because this is a big fatal flaw that makes them look not that great. However, I reached out direct and I got an answer on this one. The answer being is that this is an area we'll look into to improve in a future product. That was the answer that I got back. Uh, again, knowing this video was coming along, and look, to be honest here, without telling Garmin I was going to do a video like this, and without telling them there's an SPD power meter coming that's going to blow these away, I wanted to get this resolved so I didn't have to sit there and moan about their sprints dropping out. So my reply was, look, my takeaway from your answer is that it's an acknowledged issue, there's no resolution with current hardware, and it's something Garmin will look to resolve in future hardware releases, so a new product. My follow-up is to ask, is there any technical reason for those sprint dropouts occurring? I can only speculate that it's an issue with the accelerometers used within your Garmin vectors and rally spindles for cadence sensing. Now, without diving into the force vectors and the all of that stuff, at an end user level, my sprints were dropping out. And without going back to the six finger thing of why and what's going on, I just wanted this one resolved. I got a reply. Uh, after following up with the team, we can share that we have not had wider reports on this in the market, and we will aim to make sure it is improved when we come to future developments. My takeout from that is that because nobody else has reported this issue here, that it won't be followed up on. As mentioned in a previous video that I've done, yes, the third video on that Shimano power meter, I don't do these videos to see companies fail. Typically, they're already failing when I'm raising these tickets, raising these support requests, trying to get their product to be a little better. In fact, I want to see these companies succeed. If I come across a little frustrated, yeah, look, I am. I live and breathe this shit on a daily basis. These are the tools that I use for my own riding, my own racing, my own training, and for the work that I do. If something works well, that's exactly the story that I tell. If something doesn't work well, I try and give the companies every chance to resolve it, explain it, maybe get on a phone call, but sometimes that just doesn't happen. Anyhow, if you're still watching this one, <laughs> there's my head-to-head -head comparison between uh, two SPD power meter pedals and some hands-on user experience using both of those systems. Hopefully the first eight or nine minutes of this video was informative, and the rest of what you've just seen is a bit of an insight into the passion that I have for these products. Now, in some instances, I do deal with companies that have just as much passion, if not even more, when dealing with what they make and the queries that I send over, and I really, really do appreciate those relationships. And at the end of the day, everybody ends up with better products. And with that, thanks for watching. As always, if you found this informative, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe to be across more videos on this channel, and we shall see you soon.